Hi, I'm Cameron McKennis, animator and brand manager at the Jamaica Animation Nation Network. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to create an advanced rig for a 2D character using the Toon Boom software. This is a video that is crucial for the field of digital animation. So please pay close attention. At the end of this instructional video, you should be able to trace sketches, create layers, create a head rig, create a full body rig, create a rigging template, store rigs in the library, and identify rigging limitations. The employability skills being highlighted in this video are thinking critically, using technology, solving problems, working efficiently, paying attention to details, and planning and organizing activities. Let's discuss how to plan for a 2D rigging. The first thing you need to do is identify how complex the rig needs to be based on the script given. The next step is to identify how a character can be simplified using basic shapes. This is important because the more complex the character is, the more, the more difficult it is to animate. The next step is to construct the rigging map based on the character sketch. Then, you'll have to understand how layers are controlled using pegs. Lastly, we'll deal with how to import and section the character for rigging. Let's get into it. Let's import an image. Go to File, Import, Images, click on Browse, then locate the image on your computer, select the image, click open, and then select OK. Here we have the character's head, which is essentially a huge circle. I'll just go ahead and write head, so that's one shape, and for the outer rim of his eyes, those are essentially circles as well. So we have two more circles. Eyes, outer. And for its pupils, those are circles as well. So this is pupil. And we'll call this pupil right. Pupil dot r to indicate that it is right pupil. And pupil dot L to indicate that this is the left pupil. Now for his nose, that's just two lines. So we can just draw those shapes right there. So here we have, have his nose and his mouth is just a line that is curved. His eyebrows are rectangles. Okay, and his ears are, well, they're like semicircles. Ear dot L for left. This one will be ear dot R for right. The top of his head, we can just draw the shape here. And this would be part of his head. So this would be a part of the circle. He doesn't have a neck, so I'm gonna give him a neck. So this is another shape here. And for his body, I'm gonna separate his body into two parts. The upper part of his body and the lower part of his body. So we have two shapes lower body and upper body and for his arm we'll be breaking that into the three shapes so here we have the the upper part of his arm that's one shape and this is his right arm so we'll we'll call that that r to indicate that it's his right arm here we have the lower part which is essentially another rectangle and this entire hand would be one shape hand dot r and we don't have to do the shape for the, the, the hand over here because 
we'll just use this and and duplicate it to match over here and of course there there's his leg we break it apart the same way that we did the and so we'll have the upper leg that are lower leg that are and we have right foot if we should add this all up we have let's see about 19 shapes already and that's not including the the shape for this and here and the, this leg here that's pretty much how you'd go about breaking apart the character into basic shapes now discuss the limitations of the rig first off what will they be using the rig for right um, based on the script w will the audience be seeing the character from the front the right side the left side wherever right so think about all those things now with this character for example as we can see is only facing towards the front so you can't have this character do a do a full 360 degree turn or do certain complicated actions that uh, a normal human would do if you wanted to do those complicated movements you'd have to create more than one drawing so you'd have to have the character facing towards the front the back you know to the side etc after you've discussed it you create the rigging map to know which part connects to which piece on the character so this right here is essentially a rigging map so each part of the character that i labeled which will be essentially a separate layer for that character. So the only part that I did not do is this, this half of the body right here. Let me just go and do that right now so it can be clear. Here we have the upper left arm. So I'm gonna call it upper dot, upper arm dot left. We'll have the lower part of the arm, which I'll call lower arm. And of course we'll have the and Okay, and we'll essentially do the same thing with the legs here and of course the left foot. Now you can label these parts whatever you wish, but it would make sense to call them what they actually are. This is essentially your rigging map and we'll be putting each and every one of these pieces on separate layers. It's important to rig the character's head right in order to animate the character's head if if you don't rig it you can't animate it when rigging a character's head you need to understand parenting when rigging create layers and altering their properties inking a character's head using different layers creating pegs for each of those layers and combining each layer using the pegs So to create a new layer, you would click on the plus sign right here and click on drawing. Then you'll be able to rename your drawing, whatever you wish. So you could call this head and click add and close. The next step is to select one of your drawing tools to go ahead and trace the character. So here we have the brush tool that you can draw. We also have tools hidden under, under this tool right here, which is the square tool. So if you left click and hold your mouse button down, you'll see a list of other shapes. And one of the best tools to trace your character with is the polyline tool. So if you click on the polyline tool, you will be able to left click anywhere to create your points. You can also left click and hold down your mouse button, then drag to create a nice little curve like so then release and you'll have your curve to discontinue the line because as you can see the line continues on and on to discontinue this line you just simply press the red dot right there and then it will break the line and you can continue anywhere else on the screen like so okay so let's get right into creating the character's head. And of course, I'm undoing this by pressing Ctrl and Z. So the first thing I want is to create the, 
the, the head shape of the character, which is a circle. And if we look back on the, our rigging map, we can see that we have a head, which is essentially, you know, a circle. Let me just go with this tool right here called the ellipse tool. And I'll just left click and drag. And there I have my circle. So that is my character's head. So essentially we want to put each part of the character on different layers. So the next step is to, I'll go to creating the character's eyes. So click the plus sign, then click drawing. And then I call this outer underscore I dot. And I'm going to do the right one first. So I'm going to type R and press add and close. And I'll use an ellipse tool. I'll use the same ellipse tool to create my, my circle. And there we have it. And so that's, that's one, one of the eyes. And instead of actually creating a new layer to, and then, you know, doing the same drawing over here, we can actually duplicate this layer. So if I right click and look for duplicate, so duplicate selected layers, it automatically creates a new layer with the same shape. So let me just rename this by left clicking, double clicking inside the layer name. And I'm just going to change this to L to represent the left outer eye. And I'm going to use my select tool, which is this tool right here, to left click on the circle and then just use my mouse to move it over. And notice how each layer, when you are not when they're not activated, they, they go pale. So this is a way to show us which layer that we are currently on. So we are currently on this layer. Because as you can see, this circle is much brighter than this circle or the, the circle on the head. So let's keep going. So I'm just going to create another layer for the nose. N-O-S-E. And I'm going to use the, the line tool. Just draw a line like so. And draw another line like so doesn't matter if it's perfect then I'm going to create another layer for the mouth add and close I'm going to use my polyline tool this time so I can get that nice curve so I left click and then left click at the end and drag and release and there I have my nice curve and then I'll just left click on that red dot right there to break the line so the next step is the ear. So I'm going to call this ear dot R add and close. And I'm going to use my polyline tool again and just create a nice ellipse like so. Okay, let me undo that. That didn't go so great. So one that right, one point right there. Left click, drag, and release. Okay, and of course we're just going to duplicate this. So right click, duplicate selected layers, and then rename this to ear dot l, and use our select tool to to move it over. Now, as you can see, it's it's in, it's turned to the up. It well now, as you can see, it's turned in the opposite direction. So we'll have to flip it. So if we go to our tool tools properties over here, we can look for the operation symbol, and we have two symbols right here. One allows you to to flip horizontally, and one allows you to flip vertically. Now click on the one that says flip horizontal and it will flip, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is create our pupils. So I'm going to create a new layer, call this pupil.l. 
and I'm going to use my ellipse tool again, create a circle, and to save time, I'm just going to duplicate this, call it pupil.right, and use my select tool and move it over. Now, the next step is to create the eyebrows. So create a new layer, E-Y-E-B-R-O-W, eyebrow.l, I'll enclose. I'm going to use a rectangle for the eyebrows. So here we have one eyebrow, and I'm just going to duplicate this again. Rename and move it over. And of course, uh, remember I said in a previous video that I would just put the, the hair on top of the head. So let's go back to the head layer and just draw this right here. So I'm going to use the polyline tool and just create that nice curve like so. And let me undo that one and left click and drag. And there we have it. So here we have all parts of the head on separate layers. Create pegs to connect each of the parts together so that they can function as one unit. So as we can see, we have many, many different layers here and a peg controls other layers. Now, the first thing that we'll do is go to what is called the node view or the network view. Depending on which version of Toomboom you are using, it is called the network view. While in other versions, in earlier versions, actually, it's called the network view and in later versions, it's called the node view. So I'm using one of the later versions, so it's called the, new, the node view. And to go to that particular view, we'll go to Windows and click on Node View or Network View. Depending on your version, it could say Network View, but they are the same thing, so don't worry about it. If you look over here, as you can see, I already have my Node View over here, and these are my nodes right here. So each of these rectangular boxes represent my layers over here. And as you can see, when I click on them, it's highlighted here as well. So these are basically the layers behind the scenes. So this over here is what we'll use to actually rig the head. Let's go ahead and get started with the rig. So the first step is to create a peg for each of these layers. With my layer selected, I'm going to add a peg. I can do this one of two ways. I can come over into my layers panel and click this button right here. And as we can see, it adds a peg. It's represented by this new layer that is created. And notice it's different from the drawing layer. The drawing layer has some shapes to the left of it. And the peg has like a curve to the left of it. And also it, it has this drop down box. So essentially what just happened is that this now has become, the peg has now become a parent of the layer that I have selected. So if I should move the peg, it would automatically move the layer. So let me demonstrate that right now. So if I should click on this, which is the peg, and move, we notice that the drawing also moves. So let me control Z and undo that. You can hide the layer within the peg by clicking the drop down arrow. And that's how you would create a, a peg. You can also, let me undo, you could also right click on the layer and go to insert, then go to move and click on peg. Then it would create a peg and then you would have to automatically connect the drawing to the peg by left clicking the top and drag up into the peg like so. But I find that the easiest way is to select the 
the drawing and click the shortcut button right here. So the cool thing is that I can select all of my layers and create and create pegs for them simultaneously. So if I zoom out here and just left click and drag over all my layers like so or you could select the top layer and then scroll all the way down to the the last layer which is the head layer this layer we aren't using and hold down shift and left click it would select all the layers that way and then i would just go over here and press the button the peg button which is this and as we can see it automatically creates a peg for each of those joints now over here in the network view or the node view we can see that it creates it created the pegs but they are all messy so a quick way to a quick way to tidy this up is to select everything both the pegs and the drawings and then click this box right here where we have we have about three white boxes click that and then click on OK and it basically organizes your layers and your pegs for you now the next thing to do is we have to go ahead and set pivot points for the pegs so remember how we had to set pivot points for the joints when you create pegs they also have their own pivot points and in order to move the drawings, we need to make sure that the pivot point is close to or in exactly the same area as the drawing. But a really quick way to do this, we can actually apply the, the drawing layers pivot point position onto the peg. So to do this, we click on the drawing and then click this yellow square to the left which is the which is the properties of the drawing layer then here we are in the properties if we click on the transformation tab and go all the way down to drawing pivot we see here it says apply embedded pivot on drawing layer i'm just going to click on that drop down list and i'm going to choose the one in the middle that says apply embedded pivot on parent peg now what that does, it actually copies the pivot point from the drawing onto the peg. So we can see it identified over here. So we'll have to do this for each and every one of these pegs. So if I should click on this, notice this is where the pivot point is for the drawing. And if I sh should click on the peg, the pivot point is right here. So. Yeah, so for each peg, we'll have to go and uh, copy the pivot point position. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. So click this layer, go to its properties, make sure I'm in the transformation tab and select apply embedded pivot on parent peg, close, move on to the next. One thing to note is that you can only copy a, the pivot point's position onto one peg above. So let's say I add another peg somewhere here. I could not apply the, the pivot points location to that peg, nor could I copy this peg's position, this peg's pivot point position onto that peg. So it only goes one peg up, okay? So just keep that in mind. And I'm almost done here. Now you could also manually go ahead and move the pivot points for the pegs, but you might not get it completely accurate, you know, but that's still one way to, to do it. But I recommend doing it this way by copying the pivot points position. Okay, so now that all my pivots are set for both my drawings and my pegs, it's time to actually connect each part of the head, okay? So a good way to look at this is how your body is connected to each other. Well, that's one way to look at it. 
uh, so what we'll do is group each related part each related layer to each other and then basically work our way up the hierarchy so for example we have two pupils you know we can connect those together we have two parts of the outer eye we can con connect those together and then connect it to the pupil etc um, but a quick way to actually connect each each part to the head is by finding the head layer the head peg layer or the head the head peg rather uh, let me just move this up and then what we could do is just at select the top part of each peg and just apply just connect it to the head layer like so so i'm just going to do that and show you what it looks like and finally the eyebrow okay so with each part connected if I should select the head peg, we notice that the entire head gets selected. So right now we can actually move the entire head in its, en in its entirety. So that's one way. But the problem with this is, let's say we wanted to move only the parts of the face. For example, from the mouth all the way up to the eyebrow. There are no pegs connected to each other in that way so we couldn't move those uh, together okay so so the, the best way to do this is to connect each part connect each layer together that you would more than likely move together as a group and then connect it to the head so let me just undo each of this and we will connect each piece piece by piece so let me just start with the eyebrow so we have two eyebrows what I can do is connect one to the, the other so I can connect this eyebrow to this eyebrow so we see that the two eyebrows get highlighted or I could do it the other way around by connecting this one to this one it doesn't really matter Okay, so two eyebrows connected to each other. I'm going to connect the two pupils to each other. I'm going to do the same thing for the ears and the outer part of the eyes. Now, the outer part of the eyes are related to the pupils. Makes sense? Because the pupils are inside of the outer rings. Okay, so I'm going to connect the pupils to the outer part of the eye. So let me just bring this up where we can see it and move the pupils up. And then I'm going to connect the pupil to the outer part of the eye. Okay, now this makes sense rather than connecting the outer part of the eye to the pupil. Why? Let's say we wanted to move this pupil by itself. This pupil now connect now controls the entire outer ring for both eyes. So when you want to move this pupil by itself, you wouldn't be able to move that as we can see here. So you have to do a bit of thinking or planning before you actually go and connect your, your pieces together. So it would make more sense to connect the pupil into the outer part of the, part of the eye. So the outer parts we can use to control the entire eyes and also I can move my pupils together. Now again, if you wanted to move each pupil independently, right, you would have to connect this a different way. So right now we see where this pupil is connected to this pupil. So this pupil is the parent of this so whenever I move this peg it will move both pupils but if I wanted to move them independently I would have to separate separate those two and then connect them independently to the other part of the eye so now I'm able to select this one separately and this one separately and as a matter of fact uh, I think I might do that or 
I'll go back to for for the purposes of this rig, I'll go back to connecting the both people together. But let's keep that in mind that you can do it um, that way, depending on what you are looking for. Okay, so that is connected to the outer eye. Let me move on. So I'm going to connect the the mouth to the nose and then connect it up to the eyes right here. So nose to mouth. And keep in mind that these parts won't be moving independently. Okay, so so it doesn't matter if you connect them to each other. So mouth to okay, I'm gonna connect the these two to this right here. So this now controls the entire face. So let's say I wanted to move this face. I would be able to move this like so. Okay, for whatever reason. Okay, and I missed the eyebrows, so I'm just gonna connect the eyebrows as well to this piece right here. So now they can all move together like so. Next, I'm going to move on to the other part of the head by connect and I'm going to connect the ears to the head so they can move together as one. And then of course, I'm going to connect the entire face to the head. So I'm going to have the head being the master parent or the parent above all parents to control everything. So like so. So now I'm able to control the head like so. And also I have the face and I'm able to animate the face or move the face by itself. Okay. Now we can come over here to our layers and if we because the head is now controlling every single, every single layer or every single peg, once we click on this arrow, this arrow right here, every single other layer will be hidden inside this one peg. So you get a bit more space over here and that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it for rigging the head. The next step is uh, creating a full body rig using the network view. Right, the network view is basically an alternate way of rigging the character. So let's say for example you're drawing an arm. You would rename that layer arm and then it would be represented inside the network view right away. So each time you create a layer, it would be, um, you would see it inside the network view as you create it. So I'm going to turn on my sketch layer so we can see the body and I'm just going to create a new layer and call it, so I'm going to create a layer for the upper part of the body. So I'm going to call this upper body, press add and close. And then I'm going to use my polyline tool. And remember, you can use any drawing tool that you, you wish or that you're comfortable with. So I'm just going to use this tool and draw the character's upper part of his body. Like so. Like so. Okay, so that's done. And the reason why we can't see the lines is because my upper body layer is actually beneath my sketch layer. So if I just left click this and drag, now we are able to see. Okay, so that's done with. So I'm gonna create another layer and call it lower body. Add and close. And keep no, notice that I'm not worrying about making this perfect. This this video is just about teaching you how to rig. Okay, so I'm not worrying about colors or if my lines are straight or what. I'm just worrying more of, about how the, the rig will function at the end of the day. So 
so yeah so I have my lower body layer and I'm just going to create the lower part of the body there okay it's beneath that layer again let me bring it up above so I can see I'm going to go like so wait let me curve that line and close this line and there we have the lower part of the character's body okay and I'm just gonna go right ahead and set the keyframes right now and set the the pivot points right now sorry so on my upper body I'm gonna bring this above the lower body because you know it's above the lower body because it's upper and I'm gonna click on my pivot tool and I'm going to position the pivot somewhere around here and for the lower part of the body I'm going to position it around here and the reason why I'm not putting this in the center is that I want this part of the body to move the entire body so when it moves it would rotate around this point which would make it go in this direction okay but the upper part of the body of course I would want that to be able to rotate around the lower part like so okay and don't worry about where the pivot point is located now if it's completely accurate because you can always go back and alter it later okay so let's move on so we have upper lower i'm going to put my head layer above those and i'm going to continue so i'm going to create a new layer drawing and i think i'm going to work on the leg so upper leg dot right so dot r for for right uh, select my polyline tool and I'm going to stop it where his knee would stop so it's somewhere about about here and I'm going to go here okay so I'm seeing it that's good and just put a semicircle where his knee would go okay so we'll create a new layer again call this lower leg dot dot r and I'll go ahead and draw the lower part of the leg like so okay can't see again Okay, so it, now it's above, so I'm going to connect these points here. There we have our leg. And of course, again, I'm going to go and set my pivot points. So for the upper part of the leg, I'm going to set the pivot point to somewhere about here. And for the lower part, I'm going to set it where the, the, the character's knee would be, which would be somewhere about around here so it would rotate around that point to give it the illusion that this is the character's knee okay so the next thing is is shoe so I'm just going to create a drawing shoe name is shoe shoe dot r for right and I'm just going to draw his shoe real quick like so And again, it's below the layer, so I'm going to bring it above. And there we have his shoe. His right shoe. Okay. And I'm going to set the pivot point for the shoe to about here. Okay. Alright. So we're done with the right leg now I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate these parts so for the upper right leg 
I'm going to duplicate, duplicate selected. And I'm just going to call this one, I'm going to rename. So let me double click and call this upper leg dot L for left. I'm going to move it down. I'm going to duplicate the lower leg, the lower, the lower right leg. And I'm going to call this lower right leg dot L. So put it under that. And now I'm going to create a duplicate a shoe layer, duplicate select a layer, and I'm going to call this shoe dot L. And I'm going to bring it below these layers right here. Okay. Now the tricky thing is that I'm going to have to move these layers over to the right hand side. And when I do this, the pivot points may be altered. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're moving layers that you duplicate the pivot point, there is a possibility that the pivot point will be altered. Select them one by one and I'm just going to move them over so just like that and I'm just going to move it over to about here okay let me move all of my layers above the sketch the sketch layer so I can see and now for the lower leg I'm going to select and move it over and for the shoe, I'm going to select that as well and, and move it over. Now, because we just duplicated this leg, we'll of course have to flip it to the opposite side. So I'm going to, with the shoe selected, I'm going to go to my tools properties and select the flip horizontal tool. And I'm going to do the same with the lower leg and the upper leg and they moved so I'm just going to move them back into place like so and for the shoe I'm going to move it back into place well it's already in a good location so I'm just going to leave it there Okay, and keep in mind that, uh, remember when I said that when you move duplicated joints, the pivot points may move as, as well. So let's go ahead and check. So shoe, left. Okay, notice for the left shoe, the pivot point is still on the right shoe. So I'm going to put place it right there. And for the lower leg, lower left leg, I'm going to place it right here. And of course, for the upper leg, I'm going to place it right here. Okay. Right. So there we have our character's leg. Oh, and I forgot that in the rigging map layout, I gave the character a neck. So I'm just going to create another layer real quick drawing call this neck place it underneath the head for some reason it won't allow me to move up but don't worry about that right now and I'm just going to create a neck using a rectangle shape like so and I'm going to place the pivot point right here because it will rotate around this angle. Okay. So now that we have the character's neck, let's go ahead and create his arm. So I'm just going to create a new layer. Call this upper arm dot R for the right side. And I'm going to try and place this above the sketch again. And again, for some reason, it won't move physically um, in the layer layers panel, but it's actually above the character sketch. So I won't worry too much about that. Polyline. So, I, so I'm going to use the polyline tool. 
I'm just going to draw the upper part of the character's arm like so and I'm going to create a new layer again I'll call this lower arm dot r and create the lower part of the arm like so let me move that layer above the character sketch so we are able to see okay and one final layer for the hand so and that r and let me move this move this above and uh, draw the arm okay i'm just going to use a brush tool to draw the arm let me lower my brush size you know for demonstration purposes and one finger two finger three finger four like so okay it's not perfect but uh, I'm going to leave it like that and now it's now it's time to set my pivot points so I'm going to set my pivot point for the the and somewhere around here and for the upper arm I'm going to set it somewhere around here for the lower arm I'm going to set it here between the, the two joints and I already set up the arm okay all right so we have our arm and of course again just just as we did with the the leg I'm going to duplicate these so the upper arm duplicate and I'm going to change this to upper arm dot L and move it down then lower arm duplicate selected I'm just going to rename this to lower arm dot L and the hand I'm going to duplicate that and rename it and dot L okay so now we have our upper arm dot L our lower arm dot L and we have the hand okay so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn off the sketch layer because it seem, seems it's acting a bit weird. So just going to click that. So we're able to see everything clearly. Okay, so I'm just going to move my, my left hand across. So let me move the hand first. So I select the hand layer, click on the select tool, select the arm, the well the hand and just move it over and then I'm going to flip then do the same for the lower part of the arm move it over flip and just line it up with the the hand around so and then the upper arm I'm going to move this as well over and flip and move back to about there okay and the next thing that we'll do is of course check on the pivot points so I'm going to click on this and okay it's not there it's not where it should be but you know what let me go and move these parts a bit closer to the body before we actually alter the pivot points so move this and move the hand over okay and now we'll go to changing the pivot point so for the hand I'm going to put it here for the lower arm I'm going to put it here and for the upper arm I'm going to put it here okay so there we have all our pivot points set up
now comes the difficult part which is the adding of pegs and connecting all of those layers together to create one unified rig so i'm going to go over into my network view and we touched on this in the previous video so here we have our new layers okay so if you run into any issues like this where you see a, a layer is not connected to the composite just select the bottom square which is the blue square like right here and drag a connection into the actual composite so let me just position those real quick so let me just drag these over here so they're out of the way of the head layer as a matter of fact uh, let's organize the head so I'm just going to select all the layers on the head so these are all the layers we, as we can see from here and I'm going to group them so if I right click and click on group and then choose group selection and notice there is also a control a shortcut key which is control G if I click on that it groups them and now I have more room to work with okay so and notice it says group you can actually rename that so if I click on the properties button which is this yellow square right here I can change the name to well head close okay I'm just going to come back over here into my layers and organize them so now it's time to once again add pegs to each of these drawings and there's another way to add pegs to drawing layers so if I click on this layer and click on control P it creates a peg for that layer if I should actually select all of these and press control shift and P it creates well separate pegs for each layer let's group these up and connect them all up so I'm going to start with the left leg so here we have the left shoe I'm going to look for the left shoe which is here and what I'm going to do I'm going to maximize this screen right here and then organize these layers because the the layers are labeled so we know what what belongs to what okay so if I should press click in this space right here left click in the space and press control F once and then press control F another time it expands the network view or the node view okay so now I'm able to better organize my layers So now it's time to connect so what I'm going to do is let's think about this logically so if I should press ctrl F and I'm able to see my drawings now if if we should think about this logically we know that the foot connects to the lower part of the leg and the lower part of the leg connects to the foot right now the the lower part of the leg can't move without the foot moving right and these two right here cannot move without the upper part of the leg moving so with that in mind that's exactly how we will go about connecting these so if I should go right here I can connect the shoe to the lower leg so the lower leg would control the both itself and the shoe and I'm going to connect the lower leg to the upper leg and the upper leg would control them both so that thinking about it logically that's how you go about connecting them and of course 
the pegs again have their own as i explained in a previous video the pegs have their own pivot points and to quickly copy the pivot point from the drawing we would just go to the properties and select apply embedded pivot on parent peg to apply the pivot point directly to the peg so let me just do this for this one as well apply pivot point and we have those pivots so that way we will be able to move it like so and keep in mind that when we're rigging we use the pegs well when we want to animate we'll be using the pegs so that's the reason why we're creating the pegs so you know to connect to the the joints so we are able to animate at the end of the day so uh keep that in mind again um so let's move on so that's one leg down okay so the pivot point for this let me just copy it and that's all set let me go to the left leg which is somewhere over here and do the same connection that I did with the right leg and of course copy the pivot points like so and that is copied and then we can check okay so those are all copied the next step is well the next thing that i'll be connecting is the arms so it's the same process as the legs so hand to lower arm and lower arm to upper arm and of course remember to copy the pivot points by going into the properties and changing the joint pivot to apply embedded pivot onto pairing peg and then we do our checks to see if they were actually copied correctly and yes they were and onto the right hand connect click drag connect and copy pivot point copy pivot points and do our checks and as we can see they are all connected okay so that's it for the arms and the legs now it's time to connect the body so let me go and find the body let me just move this upright here okay so I want the lower part of the body to control both the upper part and itself and I also want the upper part of the body to move independently so let's think about this for a second so I'm going to try connecting the upper part of the body to the lower part of the body because remember as I said we want the lower part to control the entire body and we still have the upper part of the body we were still able to select that and move it independently so I believe that will work okay so I will leave it as is and remember to copy the pivot points so they are applied to the peg and I'll do this one as well and that's looking good uh, the neck I'm going to apply the pivot points as well the neck would be connected to either the body or the head now I'm thinking mm, it would make more sense to connect the, the neck to the head right because they, they, they work together so I'm just going to move the, the neck over here and move the head all the way up here and I'm just going to ungroup this because I want to see all of my my layers and pegs 
inside the head. So I'm just going to right click, click on group and ungroup. Okay, and that's that's looking better. And let me just move these up. And now I can bring these across. Bring them a bit a bit closer. And keep in mind you can also go press Ctrl F twice to enlarge the view so you are able to see what you what you're doing. Okay, so as I said before, let me switch back so we can have a visual cue of what we're doing um, on the character itself. Uh, yeah, so what we're doing is I'm going to connect the neck to the head. And I don't think I want the neck to be moving by itself at any given point. So with that in mind, I will connect the head to the neck like so and have the neck be the parent of the head. So it would be in control of the head. And the reason why I did that is because I also want the neck, the, the head, sorry, to move independently. And if I connected the neck to the head like so, the head would be the parent of the neck. So each time I move the head, the neck would move as well. And I don't want that. So because I want that independence, I would connect the head to the neck and have the neck be in control of the head. Okay, so we have the neck here, we have our head, right, all looking really good. And we have all our arms and our legs and the body. So now it's time to figure out how to go ahead and connect all of these together. So uh, in real life, on a, human on a human being, the entire upper part of the body is able to move, is able to rotate uh, around the leg, right? So what I'll do is I will connect the arms to the body because, I mean, the, the, the body can't move without the arms, right? So let me just expand this view and find the body. Where is the body? So, okay, here it is. No, that's the leg. Okay, right here. So I'm just going to connect the arms to the, the body like so. Let me check that. Okay, so they're all connected to the body and I'm going to connect the body to the neck because remember the neck is in control of the entire head. Okay, so I wouldn't be connecting it to the, 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 the head layer itself. So let me expand this and lower body, neck, let me bring this up. I'm just going to click and drag and have the neck be in control of the lower body. And the only thing that's left is the leg. So let me just reevaluate this rig. So here we have the entire upper part of the, of the body um, rigged. But I, um, I want the leg to also be connected. So let's go back into the node view. I'll connect the the legs to the lower body, which would make make more sense, right? Because the legs would definitely be connected to the lower part of the body. And they're also able to move independently, like so, okay? So we have all of our pegs connected to each other. And we have the neck being the master, the master peg of all of these pegs. Now what I would do is to make this make a bit more sense I would just go and rename this master. You don't have to but to me it makes more sense so that uh, I'll, I'll know that this controls 
all of my pigs right and with the master I'm just going to move the pivot point and instead of using the pivot point tool when I'm changing the pivot point for a peg manually you you will have to use the one of the advanced animation tools so to find those tools simply click on windows and scroll down click on toolbars and go over to advanced animation right and here we can see the tools over here usually they would show up somewhere in the bar right here but for some reason they showed up over here so i'm just going to click on the first tool which is the translate tool and i'm just going to move and notice again the pivot point looks different from the blue one that we know so i'm just going to move this all the way down to the base of the character okay and that's because when i am ready to animate it's you know it would rotate from that point so here we have a full rig The way we went ahead and rigged this particular this particular character enables us to use a set of specific shortcut keys. So let me just demonstrate that. If I should click on the leg, the right leg, and press the B key, that's the B as in boy on the keyboard, and I press the B key again, it moves up the hierarchy. So if I keep pressing B, it just continues to move up and if I hold down shift and B it moves down so that's a pretty neat little shortcut that you can use whenever you're animating so yeah uh, let's go ahead and just test this rig out so with my animate button on I'm just gonna press F6 I'm going to I'm just going to extend this of course this is just about rigging I'm not going to teach you how to animate this is just for testing purposes to, to test the rig out so I'm going to go to frame 10 and I'm going to select my left leg and press B B again to move up shift B I went too far I'm just going to move the leg like so and shift B move this leg and I think I'm going to rotate the character a bit like so and select this leg and leave it like so so there we have our character being animated Of course, you can animate the arms as well. Right. So our rig is working pretty 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 good actually All right and there you have it we've come to the end of this video I really hope you learned all about rigging a character to create in order to create a universal rig we what we could do is save this rig to the library and each time you have a new character all you would need to do is just drag and drop this character from the library and just alter the way it looks okay so essentially that would be a universal rig and to do this you would click on the master that is grouped and I would go to the library which is here if you don't see the, the menu for it there click on windows and click library okay and in the library I'm going to store this rig so that we can reuse 
reuse it new folder okay now it's created and let me name this rig rig guy and then i'll just left click and drag into this folder and release and click ok so our rig gets stored in the library so if i should exit toon boom and open it again anytime i open it i can always find the rig inside of the library okay so it will always be there unless you delete it and if i should delete my character right here i can always left click and drag the character from the library onto my stage and then begin animating so that's pretty much it let's review so we just covered planning for 2d rigging rigging a character's head and creating a full body rig let's see if we're both on the same page here are some questions what is the process for importing a sketch into Toon Boom? What are two things to consider before rigging begins? What is a rigging map? What is parenting as it relates to rigging? What is a peg used for in Toon Boom? How can a group of drawings on different layers be moved together? How do you enter the network view? What is the purpose of using different layers for each part of the character? And lastly, how is one peg linked to another? Thanks for watching this short video on creating an advanced 2D character rig in Toombo. I hope you learned how to break apart a character sketch and combining them using pegs.